Hello everyone, it is I, the Witch of Paint. Welcome to this video. Now, after visiting the nearby Glen a few more times, I have had way too many pictures of it in my gallery. So, instead of me painting just one thing today, I decided to make three paintings in different sizes. One of them is an 8cm by 8cm square. The other is 8 centimeters by 16 centimeters, and the third is 24 centimeters by 24 centimeters. And I chose to paint a waterfall on the small square, which is what I first sketch, roughly drawing in the edges of the rocks and how the water is flowing to use as a guideline for when I go in with the paints. On the rectangle, I decide to draw some lovely purple flowers that I have seen on the side of the path. They're pretty small, but I love the way they look, so I thought they'd do well for the rectangle. And I was also kind of thinking, maybe, maybe I can use that as a bookmark. Because I don't have enough bookmarks, I don't know. Is it just me, or do bookmarks just disappear after a while? Is it just me? Oh well, anyway. As for the big square, I chose a picture of a snail sleeping on a leaf just kind of hanging there. It was very funny to see that in real life and I really like the way the snail looked so that's why I decided to paint it on the big piece of paper, hoping to get some of those nice details in there on the leaf and on the snail itself. I almost even missed it as we were walking. Like, if my parents hadn't stopped and pointed it out like, oh my gosh, look at that snail. It looks like it might fall off any second now. If I hadn't done that, I would have just walked past and walked on and continued with my life as if nothing ever happened. But thanks to them pointing it out, I now have the chance to draw it. Yay! And I enjoy drawing things from spring in general because I think this is a very fun season. I mean, like, just with all the blossoms and flowers that appear all around you, the fresh green of the leaves, and somebody tidied away the trash that I have found in the glen, so that's a big plus. I mean, there's still trash lying in the glen, but I didn't really bother taking pictures of it just because at the time, couldn't be bothered with it. I did find trash in another place that isn't the glen when we visited there, and I did take plenty of pictures of that though, so you can look forward to another trash fairy soon. Yay! Anyway, there's also a pond there with, in the glen with lots of tadpoles, but with my phone camera it was a bit difficult to get a good picture of them because they're small and the water really likes reflecting stuff. So it uh, was a bit difficult to take pictures of it, even though I really kind of wanted one as a reference for tadpole images. Oh well, hopefully I'll eventually get a few pictures of the grown animals whatever they might be, because they don't have to be frogs. There's other amphibians that also start out as tadpoles, I think. I could use the internet to find references, but I really want my own tadpole pictures, okay? <laughs> Anyways, back to the actual paintings. At first, I wanted to sketch out the individual leaves around the flowers, but then I decided against it. Instead, I only drew the two flowers and would later vaguely add the leaves with paint. For the snail, I obviously had to sketch out the leaf it was sticking to as well as the snail itself. The leaf was a bit complicated, I decided to try and add in all the separate veins because this is a big painting so it would make sense for the details to be there and I tried to be like true to the reference that I had for that. It was a complicated leaf, probably the longest I took for any of the sketches, which makes sense because the picture with the snail is the biggest one. So. <laughs> It does make sense for the sketch to have taken the longest because, you know, bigger piece. The snail itself was a little bit difficult to get the guidelines right because in the image that I was using as a reference it was a little bit dark. I don't end up painting it as dark as it was in the picture but that doesn't matter because, well, artistic liberties and stuff. Now, if I'm sounding a little bit stuffy, that's just because I seem to have caught a cold a little bit. I'm fine, other than, you know, a little sneezing and coughing, just so, no, you know. 
Now, once the sketches are complete, I do outline the flowers and the snail with some waterproof black ink. I don't do any inking on the little square piece just because I thought it wasn't really necessary. Like, I don't know, didn't seem like it needed it, to be honest. So I only outline the flowers and the snail. And then with the paints, I do everything else. So in the big painting, the leaf is not going to be outlined. Although that might have been a good idea because once I lightly erased everything, I kind of couldn't tell anymore what the leaf structure was exactly. And I might have, you know, remembered that the leaf has holes rather than putting in the wet paint immediately and then just promptly forgetting that there's holes in the leaves because the snail has obviously had some I don't remember was it lunchtime probably maybe who knows <laughs> anyways for painting I used the Winsor Newton sketches palette this came with the colors lemon yellow cadmium yellow hue cadmium red pale hue alizarin crimson hue ultramarine cerulean blue hue Viridian hue, sap green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and Chinese white. My goodness, this palette has a lot of hues in it. But overall, I do like the palette quite a lot. It's very nice for uh, things like this. Not necessarily for the flowers, which you'll see later on, but it's kind of just slightly turned out a little pale, if you ask me. I also don't use any of the Chinese white. I don't know why they've put that in there. I would have preferred a Payne's grey rather than the Chinese white because I don't ever use white. Because usually I just... If I need a white space, I just leave the white paper white. It's way easier than trying to add the white back in, especially with watercolours. I know with gouache you can add the white in at the end, but I'm not using gouache in these paintings. I do want to use gouache more in the future, but at the moment I'm just not feeling it. Watercolour is my comfort zone, what can I say? <laughs> and I'm saving all my inks for Inktober. <laughs> but a great example of me leaving the white space as white is the waterfall painting I start off with. So that tiny little square in the bottom corner. <laughs> I paint in the greenery on the top of the painting and then slowly work myself down painting the rocks above the waterfall and below it because like it's a sort of two-step waterfall. It was really cool because on the day that we went there to that waterfall the river was so dried up you could basically just kind of walk in and get real close to those tiny waterfalls that were there. There's also bigger ones that were further up but as I said it was a bit dried up so it didn't look as impressive as it did in the winter. And I also didn't want to paint the houses because quite frankly this is a small painting and I wasn't sure how well small houses were going to get across on there. So we're painting the tiny waterfall. As I've said though this is a great example of me leaving the white spaces white as I leave the places where the water is falling so where it is white. I don't paint anything in there other than you know perhaps a little yellow ochre and little greyish tones that I've had to mix for myself because the palette didn't come with a paint's grey. I'm not salty, I'm just a little bit disappointed. <laughs> but I do use those two colours to kind of draw in the little gaps and the little lines that form when water falls down because it doesn't fall down in a chunk, does it? Just to sort of separate out the different bits of the water. The water that's not falling has a somewhat greenish greyish tone thanks to the plants around it and the rocks below the water. Keep in mind everyone, water is not blue. It is see-through and reflective so technically it is only blue when the sky is reflected in it or if it happens to be in a blue kind of container like say a swimming pool or I don't know a blue teapot. Then it does look blue, but it's usually not blue unless sky is reflecting in it. So this water is basically going to be green, <laughs> but only because of the plants that reflect down on it. And also I think it, there were a few parts where there were algae 
But I don't think in that particular bit, just because the water is so runny, you know. <laughs> now, the waterfall painting, I basically do in one go. Because it's a small painting, so it didn't take all that long to finish. So before I even start the other two, I am done with the waterfall painting. <laughs> the flower painting and the snow painting obviously take quite a bit longer, because they are bigger pieces. The flowers, however, don't take as long as the snail, at least not if you consider just the painting time and not the time that it took to dry. I do start out by painting the flowers purple, which I had done by mixing some alizarin crimson with some of the ultramarine. It didn't end up giving me quite as bright a purple as I would have liked, but it was good enough. I guess for the flowers I might have been tempted just a tiny bit to take a colour from the Winston Newton flower palette I have to get a brighter purple because in the end I think the flowers look a little bit pale and the flowers in my reference were anything but pale. <laughs> they were quite a bright purple pink sort of colour and I don't think I got it very well. I mean, they do look nice in the end, but like, yeah, could have done a better job, at least colour-wise. While the flowers dry, I paint the snail in with a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna. First, it gets like a light layer of colour, sort of just to get a little basis, because the snail has some nice light stripes combined with some dark areas really love the way the snail looks. I don't know the actual name of a species of snail that it was because I'm not a snail expert. Um, I'm just here to draw. <laughs> and while it is still wet I go in with a little bit more burnt sienna to just kind of get a basis for the different lines of a snail and also to just kind of let the paint flow a little bit, get the stripes to be not quite, you know, even. Because this is nature, this is a natural being, it's not going to have linear lines. It's not going to be a linear line, it's more like a zigzaggy kind of thing, if you know what I mean. I do have to admit though that the stripes aren't exactly as they were on the snail itself, but Nobody's going to know, right? Right? Uh, people are going to see this video, aren't they? <laughs> oh well. After adding a few more details to the snail, I start to paint the leaf it hangs from. This leaf is obviously painted with different shades of green, so I mostly used sap green, a little bit of a lemon yellow, uh, occasionally some burnt sienna just to tone it down a bit. I occasionally also, I think, mix in the ultramarine. I am all over the place with this green mixing when it comes to that leaf, honestly. But that's just because the leaf itself had so many different shades in it and I kind of wanted to get it as accurate as I could. Which is, you know, understandable, obviously. <laughs> I kind of wanted to get in, get those veins in there as well. And the veins were lighter than the bits around them, if that makes sense. I didn't even draw in all the veins, just like the main ones. And then just kind of sort of trying to do things by putting in darker colours into the negative spaces, I guess. Between the veins, if that's even the right term. I hope I'm not using the term wrongly. But I mess around with that quite a while. <laughs> But once I'm happy with the detail of a snail's leaf, I wet the area around it as well to paint in the leaves that are in the background. Towards the top there's no leaves though, so I kind of do like dark leaves up the bottom and then just sort of thin them out. Just kind of making it a little bit blurry as well, just because the focus is on the snail, you know? Overall, like, the favourite things to paint for this video were the waterfall and that leaf. It was simply a lot of fun. The waterfall, because it was small and simple and, like, from far away you can see that it's a waterfall, but if you go up close you could see the individual paint strokes, which I guess could be kind of annoying, but oh well. And the leaf, obviously, because it has so many little bits and pieces that I could 
mess around with, with the lighting especially. It was just very beautiful to paint. Now, eventually all of these paintings are dry and ready for flattening, and I am now ready to show you the final result of this painting endeavour. I do like them all, except for the flowers that are just a touch bit too dull. Like, they need to be a bit brighter, in my opinion. That's mostly because the reference is a lot more pinkish than the final result I got. Otherwise, they are obviously lovely. The waterfall is gorgeous and I love how from far away when you look at it it's like oh that's a waterfall. Up close it might not be as obvious but from far away you can tell and that's all good. The snail. Gosh I love the snail. I, I, I even love the picture of a snail I took just because the snail hanging there looking as though it might fall off and mind you it gets windy in that area so like it's a bit of a dangerous place for a nap, if you ask me. <laughs> but overall, these paintings are three very beautiful pieces, and I hope you enjoyed watching me paint these. And if you did enjoy them, why don't you subscribe, like the video, and comment something you like about this season of the year. And while you're at it, check out my socials in the description down below. I am the Witch of Paint, and I will see you all next Sunday. Bye! And now for everyone who made it to the end of the video, here are some outtakes for you. The leaf it was sti sticking to. Stididding. Stididding. Sticking. Sticking. It does make sense that that is the longest painting, well, sketch, not painting, because I'm not painting it, am I? Ah, oh, Daria, get your words straight. But overall, I like the pattern, uh, not the pattern, the palette.